I tell my brother to just come forward and get us out of this horrible mess. Welcome to Reporter Room, where we seek truth and justice. I'm Jessica Della Davies, an investigative journalist. Today, we're going to talk about the case of Gabby Petito and the disappearance of Brian Laundrie. Let's discuss the change in timelines from Brian supposedly being reported missing on September 14th to now apparently being reported missing on September 13th. Let's talk about the changing stories of why Brian returned home from Utah from August 17th through August the 24th. First, we heard that Brian needed to clean out a storage locker to save money to extend his trip with Gabby Petito. Now, we are hearing that Brian had a fight with Gabby and came home to get a few things from his storage locker. Both of these timeline changes were done this week by the laundry parents attorney, Stephen Bertolino. Most importantly, we're going to follow up on the connections to the mysterious murders of a Moonflower grocery employee and her girlfriend. We're going to talk about the case of Kylan Schultz and Crystal Turner. So let's get into it. So Gabby and Brian had a horrific argument outside a Utah grocery store called the Moonflower Grocery Co-op. Now we know that a young woman who worked at the Moonflower along with her girlfriend were found murdered. They were found just one day after Brian returned home on August 17th from Utah. If you haven't seen part one of this series, Is Brian Laundrie a Serial Killer? Please look at this. I will link it for you in the description below. In order to prove someone committed a crime, there must be three elements present. Motive, means, and opportunity. Did Brian have these three elements? In my opinion, he did. Up until today, the story was that Brian came home to clean out a storage locker. Before we dig into this, please subscribe and like this video. Also, everything I'm sharing is my opinion, so please don't say it, send any hate to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's be good to each other. Motive. Motive is a reason or motivation to commit a crime. Brian did not know that Kylan was not the one who called 911 on August 12th after he and Gabby had an altercation at the Moonflower Grocery Co-op where Kylan worked. We know from Brian's behavior at the Mary Piglet Mexican Grill where he was reported as going inside and outside numerous times to fight with the hostess that Brian had a temper. Listen to this. Right next to them, they got kicked out of the restaurant and were fighting with the hostess. They were fighting with the hostess. She was hysterically crying and she walked out and she, she was crying and she was staying on the sidewalk and I was watching the whole thing unfold. We know from the 911 call on August 12th that Brian was seen slapping Gabby outside the Moonflower Grocery Co-op. So we know Brian had a reason and a motive. The reason, in my opinion, is that Brian believed Kylan called the police on him on August 12th. Look how tiny the Moonflower Grocery Co-op is. Brian would have seen Kylan inside the store. The motivation, in my opinion, was rage. Brian was probably livid when he was made to sleep at the Bowen Motel after the August 12th Mohab police stop. Means is the ability and tools necessary to commit a crime. We know that Brian had the means to commit the crime. In my opinion, Brian was involved in the homicide of Gabby Petito and the subsequent cover-up. We also have proof in the form of a photo of Gabby holding a gun, which provides Brian with the tool needed to commit the double homicide of Kylan and Crystal. Opportunity. This is adequate chances to commit the crime. Brian was taken by Mohab police to the Bowen Motel, which is just around the corner from Woody's Tavern. Woody's is where Kylan and Crystal were last seen on August the 13th. 
We also know that Brian was known to hitchhike around Utah. We know that Brian ran to Florida in Gabby's van after Gabby's homicide. And in a bizarre move, Brian also went to Florida right after Kylan and Crystal were reported missing. Staff at the Bowen Motel in Mohab, Utah have confirmed that Brian did stay there after police drove him on August the 12th. The Bowen Motel is just around the corner from the Moonflower Grocery Co-op. According to Google Maps, it's just a couple minutes away. It's also close to Woody's Tavern, where the women were last seen on August 13th. This was just one day after Brian's altercation with Gabby that resulted in the police stop and the pair being separated, right? Kylan and Crystal were camping in an obscure location. So obscure, the police couldn't find them when they were reported missing after Crystal didn't show up for work on August 16th. Cindy Lou Hunter, a family friend of Kylan's father, Sean Paul, found the pair. So who else would have wanted these two women harmed? So let's look at the timeline. August 12th, Brian and Gabby have their fight at the Moonflower Co-op. Kylan Schultz is the cashier that day. We know that Chris, a civilian, called 911 to report the incident. We know that Brian didn't know who called to report the incident. And we know the police have Gabby take her van that night and drive Brian to the Bowen Hotel. August 13th, Brian sleeps at the Bowen Motel and wakes up in the morning of August 13th. We don't know where Brian was between August 13th and when he left for home on August 17th. We do know that the Bowen Motel is just a couple of minutes walk to Woody's Tavern. We know that this is the last place that Kylan and Crystal were seen alive. They were seen at 9.30 and they said that there was a creep staying near them. Kylan and Crystal were found dead on the LaSalle Mountain Top Road at their campsite by Cindy Lou on August 18th. And the Bowen Motel is just a 15 minute drive to the LaSalle Mountain Top Road. Brian's sister stated to the press that, quote, whenever they fight, they take a little break and come back and be fine because you know that's what you do in a couple, end quote. It is possible that after the dispute they had in the van, that they decided to separate for a little bit and to take a break, right? And if this is true, then isn't it a possibility that Brian could have ended up camping near to where Crystal and Kylan were staying? The bizarre coincidence between Gabby's homicide and the murders of Kylan and Crystal have left many wondering if Brian thought Kylan made the phone call to Mohab police and if he was involved in their deaths. Why did Brian fly back to Northport, Florida on August 17th? Gabby's mom, Nicole Schmidt, is also questioning why Brian made this unusual trip. Brian's sister, Cassie, initially claimed that Brian's dad, Chris Laundry, offered to let Brian and Gabby keep their belongings at the family home so they wouldn't have to pay for a storage unit. So the story from the Landry camp is that Brian flew, br flew back after August 17th and appeared to confirm that he did have a storage locker. Cassie said she didn't know the contents of the locker or its location. As of October 8th, the laundry attorney, Stephen Bertolino, changed the story of Brian's suspicious trip to Florida to Brian came home after a fight with Gabby. According to the Daily Beast, Bertolino said that Brian flew home from Salt Lake City, Utah on August 6, 17th, just one day after Crystal was reported missing and flew back to Utah on August the 23rd. And now he was only picking up a couple of items from his storage unit. So why does this story keep changing? Let's look at this logically. So in my opinion, the story earlier this week was that Brian flew home to save money on a storage locker 
Brian purchased an airline ticket to Florida and then another airline ticket back to Utah. They put Gabby up in a hotel for seven or eight days. And how much is a storage locker? The average 10 by 10 storage locker is under $100 a month. It made no sense in comparison to the hundreds of dollars that Brian and Gabby spent between airline tickets and hotel stays. So this is why we're probably getting a change in the story, in my opinion. It's also worth noting that after Gabby's disappearance, Brian also hightailed it back to Florida, driving Gabby's van, using Gabby's credit cards, and with Gabby's cell phone, allegedly. So, was leaving after an alleged homicide a pattern of Brian's? Is it a coincidence that Brian left just one day after Crystal's co-workers report that she's missing? Kylan and Crystal were found by a friend of Kylan's father, Cindy Sue Hunter. They were lying in a creek, shot on August the 18th near their campsite at the LaSalle Mountains. Kylan's father stated at her funeral, quote, Kylan was the greatest thing that ever happened to this dad. Another light came into my life. It was Crystal. I loved her like my own daughter. Kylan's funeral took place the same week that Northport, Florida, police stated that authorities are now investigating the possibility of a link between the double homicide and Gabby's homicide. Although authorities initially ruled out the link, they have decided that there could be a link between the cases. We know that Moab Police Department were called on August the 12th. We know that Brian was taken to the Bowman Hotel just two minutes from the Moonflower Grocery Co-op. And we know that on Friday, August 13th, Kylan and Crystal were seen for the last time at Woody's Tavern. Just days later, after being reported missing on August 16th, they were found dead in an obscure campsite in LaSalle. The Sheriff's Office is not ruling out the possibility that these cases are connected. The Grand County Sheriff's Office has been in contact with Florida authorities and state they are actively looking into any connection between the Gabby Petito case and the deaths of Kylan and Crystal that occurred in Grand County. The unsealed search warrants say the pair were found dead in a nearby creek with multiple gunshots. According to court documents, the wounds were located on their backs, sides, and or chests. The document also states that Kylan had told her friends there was a creepy man around their campsite. Although Kylan did not call the police on Brian August 12th, Brian didn't know that and the FBI has been working to collect Brian's DNA. This would provide details for all three deaths. Now, a photo of Gabby holding a gun on her van life trip that she was on with Brian has surfaced along with photos of a gun hanging up in his bedroom. So we know that there may have been a gun on the trip with them, in my opinion. So is Brian a serial killer? In my opinion, Brian had motive, means, and opportunity. According to the Grand Sheriff's Office, Kylan and Crystal were transported to the Medical Examiner's Office and the preliminary investigation provided evidence that both were shot. Mohab only has around 5,000 residents total, so the crime rate is very low. It's unusual to have three homicides within a few weeks of each other in Moab, Utah. Anyone with information that can lead to an arrest is asked to contact the Grand County Sheriff's Office at 435-259-8115. Please subscribe, like, and leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.